It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 765, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host of the show. Welcome back to another Friday show where I play your questions and simply answer them. On all the other days, I read health and fitness blogs to you like an audiobook, with permission from the authors, of course. And a big thank you to Carbona for their support. They've been helping people live life unstained for more than a century. From carpet cleaners, specialty stain removers, pet stain and odor removers, and more, you can get the job done fully, quickly, and easily. Want to start living your life unstained? Shop Carbona.com with code OHD for 20% off your order. That's C-A-R-B-O-N-A dot com and the code OHD. So earlier this week, I was talking about how my path to hosting this show, for example, and my career wasn't always the straightest path. There were a lot of curves and U-turns along the way. But what truly brings me joy is being able to educate others on how to improve their lifestyles. And so I love being able to hear and respond to your questions. If you're interested in sending me a question, I'll let you know how you can do that at the end of the show. But for now, let's hear today's question and start optimizing your life. Hi, Dr. Neil. My name is Lindsay Smith, and I had a question regarding dairy um, and whether or not if you are trying to eat healthier, if you should include it in your diet, or even just in general. Um, I've heard a lot of mixed things about it, so I was kind of wondering what you think. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Lindsay, and your timing is perfect. Just yesterday, we were talking about plant-based foods versus foods that came from animals. And dairy was one of those things that we kind of glossed over really quickly. So I don't blame you for feeling confused and frustrated about much of the information out there, especially with regards to dairy products. Because every day it seems like a new study gets published that contradicts another we just finished reading. Just when you think the book is closed on a food or nutrient, it gets reopened. So believe me, I share your frustration. To help answer your question about whether dairy is truly good for us, meaning does it actually promote health and wellness instead of causing us harm, we need to understand why there's still so much confusion. Part of this is because when studying a particular topic, like the health benefits of consuming milk, let's say, researchers use different methods. One study may ask older adults what they ate and drank when they were younger. Another may follow young people for 20 years to see how they age and how their eating habits influence their health as they age. Depending on how the data were collected and who chose to participate in the study, you might get very different results. Here's where it gets even more complicated. When it comes to the dairy recommendations specifically, it turns out that the dairy industry has a lot of money in their pockets, and sometimes they use that money to influence nutrition recommendations. I'll share an example of this with you. About 10 years ago, when the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, was designing the newest dietary guidelines for Americans, they felt that based on all the studies they examined, adults really only need to consume about one to two cups of dairy per day. Remember, one cup of milk, for example, is about the size of your fist. So basically, if you drank about that much milk in a day or had that as part of your bowl of cereal in the morning, you're good. So they were getting ready to publish these new guidelines saying American adults don't actually need three or four cups of milk of dairy each day like we once thought. One to two cups would be just fine. Well, once the dairy industry got wind of this, they started creating a huge stink. They told the USDA that if you start saying that Americans only need one to two cups of dairy each day, then we will stop giving you money for your programs. You heard right, the USDA receives money from the dairy industry. And because the USDA receives large contributions from the dairy industry, they quickly changed their recommendations. So you'll still see that they recommend three to four cups of milk or dairy each day for most healthy adults, even though we may only need one to two cups. What this means is, when we look at some of the scientific studies out there, some of them may have been paid for by folks in the industry. You may think, but researchers are supposed to just report the findings. They're not supposed to be biased or swayed. And you would be absolutely right, but this isn't the reality. Yes, scientific studies can be swayed one way or another, and sometimes that pressure comes from whoever funded the study. Scary, I know. So this partly explains why you might see conflicting opinions, especially about this topic in the news. The Harvard School of Public Health says, we know this is a fact, so we're going to ignore the USDA dietary guidelines and state that 
Americans really only need one up to two cups of dairy per day. So personally, I like to use that recommendation. Oh, and by the way, if you want to learn more about the how and why it's possible for people that don't know a thing about nutrition are allowed to change dietary recommendations, definitely check out Marion Nessel's book called Food Politics. All right, so back to your question, Lindsay. Unless you have an allergy to milk or lactose intolerance, drinking cows, sheep's, or even goat's milk is fine. Milk, dairy, have a lot of important nutrients for the body. It's a decent source of protein and also a good source of calcium and riboflavin. We know that dairy products like yogurt may also contain potentially beneficial probiotics to help support gut health. Milk specifically does contain quite a bit of sugar, but it's in the form of lactose, so there's no need to consume it in large quantities. Again, I would say one to two cups of milk or yogurt each day is fine. For example, you could have some milk with your oatmeal in the morning and then have one cup of Greek yogurt in the afternoon as a snack, and that would be plenty for the day. Thank you again for the question, Lindsay. And a big thank you to Carbona. A stain-free and clean home is something to be proud about, but it's hard to maintain when you're using cleaning products that don't work well or take forever to use. Q Carbona, a household brand that has turned their decades of cleaning expertise into products that get the job done fully, quickly, and easily. When I heard about stain devils, my stain removing game was changed. Think about this. If you have a chocolate stain, it wouldn't make sense to treat it with a formula that removes wine. They're chemically different. Knowing this, Carbona created specific stain removers for specific stain types. Genius, right? Beyond stain removers, they have highly efficient products for your laundry, carpets, and washing machine. Want to start living your life unstained? Shop Carbona.com with code OHD for 20% off your order. That's C-A-R-B-O-N-A dot com and the code OHD. And really quickly before I go, if you want to send me a question, come by oldpodcast.com slash ask or call in your question. The number is 61 I love OHD. All right, that'll do it for this week. Thank you for listening every day and all the way through. For those of you that have finished your academic year and or have graduated, big, big congratulations to you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits.